Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio. In today's session, we're gonna paint this loose, wet and wet calico kitty. I'm also gonna deconstruct for you the different aspects of paper moisture levels and paint consistency levels and how they interact depending on what level of paper moistness and paint thickness on your brush you are working with as this information is crucial to success with the more advanced wet on wet techniques that made this painting possible. I used white Watson paper, which is from Japan. It's made out of cellulose, but in many ways behaves like cold press, but yields more accentuated fur effects. And I found this paper directly from Yutaka Murakami, who I'm eternally grateful to for sharing a few of his secrets. However, this paper is expensive because it comes from Japan and you can get similar results using many cold press papers. I would recommend Arsh cold press as a close second option. I'm also trying out a cheaper alternative cellulose paper called Fluid, which is much cheaper than White Watson here in the US. I recommend using the largest size you can as the paint will bloom out and that takes room. So be sure to check out my friend Bedorka's video about that here. By the way, Bedorka is another important person in my journey of learning how to paint these wet and wet cats. So be sure to check her out on her Etsy shop and also on Skillshare. The paints I'm using include Holbein Oriolan. By the way, be careful because most Oriolans are not light fast, but Holbein is. M. Graham Naphthol Red, Lamp Black, and Burnt Sienna. As a side note, Lamp Black is important to this technique because it blooms or diffuses more than many paints, making it particularly good choice for achieving soft furry textures. Be sure to check out my video about diffusion so that you can understand why that characteristic of watercolor paint really matters when you're trying to paint wet on wet fur textures. I also rely heavily on my silver black velvet three quarter oval to act as my mop and for painting large areas. And I also use my trusty size eight round and an old rigger for applying masking. Be sure to watch my video about masking for more details about how to use that product. I'll link that right in the upper corner here. So to begin, I transfer my drawing to the paper, erase the lines so they are lighter, apply masking, and then start with my underpainting of clear water. But before we get to the really good stuff on wet and wet, I want to invite you to join my Patreon. In addition to the benefits listed here, you will have a higher level of access to my tips and tricks, and depending on which tier you join, receive paint dots and artwork mailings, critiques of your paintings, and much more. All right, so after the painting is ready to go, the first step is to apply clear water. A few tips about this stage. Sop up any puddles and get the water evenly distributed over the entire painting, except where you want sharp edges and or completely white areas. The white areas in this painting never got any water or paint on them, so they keep their crisp, clean whiteness and sharp edges intact but when you want the soft fur textures, you paint clear water over the entire area, including across boundaries, so the background and fur areas become one. So when you apply paint over, it can softly merge with the surrounding areas to create realistic, dreamy fur effects. You want the paper to be glistening. And that leads me to a sub-discussion I wanna have with you about the three or four stages of paper moistness that you need to understand and which you can do different techniques on depending on how wet or dry your paper is. So stage one, we'll call it stage one, is glistening, which is right after you've applied the water and sopped up any puddles. You wanna let it dry a tiny bit, but still have it glistening when you apply your cream consistency paint for the fur textures. Your patience and preparation will pay off when you swish your first bit of paint onto the paper and your paint blooms out, veritably painting the fur itself while you watch it bloom and diffuse. By the way, different paints bloom out with more or less abandon depending on their individual diffusion properties. So back to paper stages we'll call stage one glistening. That's when your paint will bloom out the best and create really soft fur textures. Then as the paper dries, it enters into what we'll call stage two or the buckling stage. This is when the water has absorbed completely into the paper and your paper starts to buckle. This is the stage where you can get cauliflowers if you drop too watery of paint onto the drying paper. Now the paper's not dry, it's just still quite damp. 
So with practice, you can use this technique to your advantage to create enhanced fur textures, cauliflowered fur textures, using what I call the push technique, which I will link that to the up in the upper right corner, and also get very soft but controlled details, such as cat eyeliner and soft swishes of fur when you use cream consistency paint during this buckling stage. Then the paper finishes drying and we'll call this stage three when the paper is completely dry. When your paper is completely dry, you can get a whole nother list of different effects such as dry brush technique where you can create more uh, sharper edged fur brush strokes. This is also a good time to get sparkles on water, texture on rocks, things like that. When your paper is dry, you can also get sharper details like nose holes and any other aspect in your painting that requires hard edges, such as the outer edges of cat's ears, for example. So to master wet on wet techniques such as in this painting, it's important to understand how these different stages of paper dryness interact with different amounts of tea, milk, and cream consistency paint, resulting in very different brush stroke effects on the paper. So this is cream, milk, tea consistency. Now let's see what they do when I lift my palette up. The milk isn't even running either, but there are drips at the bottom of it. I don't know if you can see that. And of course the cream is not running at all. So that is a great way to illustrate the difference between tea, milk, and cream consistency paint. I've now laid the groundwork for you to understand how to harness the power of the beauty of wet and wet technique for painting fur. So now let's switch to me just explaining what I'm doing as this painting unfolds. So I'm gonna backtrack the footage a little bit here just to explain what I've been doing. During this glistening stage, I've been applying cream consistency paint and letting the power of diffusion do the work by dropping the paint into the areas I want it and then letting it spread out onto the wet paper. And I'm using lamp black where you see black and I'm using a mix of Holbein Oriolan with M gram naphthol red with a little bit of burnt sienna maybe here and there thrown in for the calico colors and I let them melt and merge together and create these soft fur textures. So this is the glistening stage of the painting where it's really wet. Now here in the lower corner of the shoulder there, you can see where my paper is getting too dry and I need to re-moisten it. So that will have to be reworked later because my paper got too dry. And depending on your climate, your paper may dry out too fast. And there you can see I also sprayed it. And now I'm going to work on some of the details in the face. This paper is completely dry. So I'm putting in some Holbein Oriolan, about tea, between tea and milk consistency there to get the under layer, the underpainting of the eyes in. And then I'm gonna let them dry a little bit. And while they're drying, I'm gonna put in some clear water over the next areas of the painting that I wanna work on. So here you see I'm re-moistening one area of the painting. I'm moistening the ears and all the parts of the head that I don't want to have white fur. And I'm also adding the eyeliner to the dry paper. So you see that's an that's a example of me painting on dry paper where I can get really hard edges for the eyeliner. And then while I'm working in the same area, I paint in some details in the eyes and I like to keep the top half of the iris a little bit darker in color than the lower half of the iris because that really creates some depth and dimension to eyes. So that's just a little sub tip, sub trick that I have when I'm painting cat's eyes. Of course, I get the glisten in the eye by adding the masking at the very beginning of the painting. And now I'm painting some soft fur textures into my moist glistening. It's really halfway between glistening and buckling stage of the paper here where I'm painting in the fur textures around the white areas of the cat's face. And so you see where my clear water areas end, that's also where my fur color ends and the white of the paper remains. So for those of you who are very new to watercolor painting, that's how you save the whites in your paper is by not ever painting anything on them, neither clear water 
nor paint. And there you see I use my spray bottle when things are getting too dry and stiff and stilted looking. I'll give my painting a little spritz to loosen everything back up. So for you tight painters out there who are wanting to paint loose and more painterly, that's a little trick. What if you fall into your old habits and find yourself painting something stiff and stilted, have your spray bottle handy and give it one little mist and that will loosen everything up really nicely, but you still have enough control so it doesn't spread out into one big blob. So here I'm painting on the buckling stage where I can paint in little details like the ear liner. Do you see how on the dry side of the ear, it creates a hard edge and on the inside edge of the ear liner, it's soft, but it still holds its shape. That's the beauty of the buckling stage of your paper. You can paint on it with cream consistency paint and have really beautiful soft details, but those details hold their shape. When I can get the paper at just the right amount of moisture level, I love to paint eyeliner and ear, li ear liner during this stage to get really soft, but small details that stay soft. Okay, I'm re-wetting this area of the paper and the eye. You can see how wet the paper is by how much that black bloomed off the corner of the eye. And you can see where my paper is drier, where I'm getting hard edges. And I'm painting with about milk consistency paint here. Using my silver black velvet size eight round for these smaller details. And again, you can see how I put a little bit darker paint at the top half of the iris of that eye to create depth and dimension. Now, I really loved how my whiskers came out. So I chose to paint some to, between tea and milk consistency paint behind the whiskers so that they really pop out. And you really see the whiskers in this painting. And I think the whiskers help direct the viewer's eye towards the cat's face. They kind of act as arrows. Here I'm painting the side, the black side of the face and look how that's feathering out nicely into the stage, I would say stage two level of dryness in the paper, almost buckling, a little bit wetter than, than buckling. <laughs> There's sub stages too. And see how that black feathered out softly into the background, but still held its shape. That's because it's just slightly moist. It's definitely not glistening anymore though. And here where I'm painting some of these fur textures like along the top of his head, they're staying nice and soft, but they're holding their shape too. I'm using cream consistency paint to add these soft fur textures on my buckling moist paper. Again, I'm using a mix of Oriolan, Holbein Oriolan, and M. Graham Naphthal Red to create that orange. And I add a touch of burnt sienna, which is considered an earth color, meaning that when you add it to mixes, it grays them down ever so little bit to make them look like more natural colors. And now I'm using tea consistency paint on perfectly dry paper. And you might see that I dotted at that those areas that I just painted to kind of smush the edges so that they're not so stark and just slightly softened so that they don't look pasted on. And I'm putting in the nose and that is mostly naphthol red, maybe with a tiny bit of burnt sienna added and quite a bit of water to keep it a lighter color. You get lighter colors and watercolor by adding water. And now I'm sprinkling some water onto the onto the um, painting. Now, do you see how I got those sprinkles of clear water on that big black spot? That is classic technique, cauliflower technique that you can use when your paper is buckling. You can get a few drips on each of your fingers and then splat it on the paper that is buckling onto cream consistency paint that is already on the paper and it will cauliflower out and make that, it almost looks like snowflakes are on that big black area of his, the cat's back. And that's how it was done using my knowledge and understanding of the buckling stage of paper where it's more prone to cauliflower and sprinkling a few larger drops of water into that area to create that dreamy look of snowflakes or cauliflower, little cauliflowers in his fur. 
getting the area behind the whiskers a little bit darker even still because I want to really pop them out and show them off because I was very happy with them. And now the paper is completely dry. Stage three, right? What we're calling stage three for the good of this painting. That's when you can remove your masking. You want to remove your masking as soon as possible. If you leave it on for more than say a week, it will possibly stick to your paper and cause it to tear. And this is what I often do at the end of my painting to finish it off. I use a scrubber. Be sure to check out my video on scrubbing and using a soft scrubber, using a stiff scrubber. For this paper, you have to use a soft scrubber because it will tear the paper. But a scrubber is a brush that you use to soften harsh edges. And I always do a little bit of scrubbing on my whiskers, especially where the whisker meets the face to soften that area. So I'm just softening some of the edges. Now, one of the edges that I didn't like, it got too dry. You can see that back area of the cat's back, that whole area that's up against the background, the black markings up against the white of the background. And so, on this white Watson paper, what you can do is reactivate the paint. It reactivates very easily. But if you're working on Arsh Cold Press 140 pound, like most of you probably will, then you will need a stiff scrubber because the paint doesn't reactivate and move around as easily on Arsh Cold Press, which by the way makes Arsh Cold Press much easier for beginners to use and also is much more amenable to the technique of glazing and layering. You can't glaze and layer on this white Watson paper because the paint reactivates too easily but on this white Watson paper, it's really easy to erase paint and reactivate it and make it rebloom. So that's what I was doing there. And now I'm just signing with my Funasuke calligraphy brush, which is my favorite brush de rigueur right now for signing. And I'm removing that tape. You can see here too, how I have two layers of tape. I have the 3M medical micropore tape then the masking on top of that because I have been having problems with my tape coming up and I have had a hard time finding tape, but I think I finally uh, really like this, this outcome. So here's my loose wet on wet calico cat. And if you paint this, I would love to see your results and I will see you in my next tutorial. So please be sure to subscribe because I upload, upload one to two videos every week. I'll see you all next time. And thank you so much to my Patreon members who make this channel possible. Bye everybody.